It's the Boston Knight, and Gibson is still stubbornly trying to protect his slim two-to-one edge. He has banned 10 and allowed only six hits. He quickly retires two, but then Scott walks. Manager Shandy's goes to the mound to caution Homer over that short fence could win for Boston now. Mike Andrews flies to right field. Maris grabs it to end the game. The Cardinals win two to one. Shannon leads the rush to congratulate Gibson. It's a big win for him after coming back from a fractured ankle in mid-July. Bob Gibson gets a slider over the outside corner and Scott strikes out. With two out in the Red Sox second, Rico Petroselli strikes out on a curveball that's almost in the dirt. In the Boston third, Joe Foy fans on an outside pitch. Bob Gibson warms up for the Boston eighth. He's been in complete command so far, allowing only three hits with not a runner passing first base. Jerry Adair is now at bat with two outs. Adair smashes the ball through Gibson, but Javier grabs it, throws him out. And St. Louis wins six to nothing to take a three to one lead in the series. It was all Bob Gibson today as he fired a five hitter for his second victory over the Red Sox. In the Boston fourth with two outs, Bob Gibson still hasn't allowed a hit and he fans Harrelson. It's his seventh strikeout. With one away in the fifth, Gibson hammers a long drive to center. The ball lands on a ledge just to the right of the flagpole. It's a home run. Homers aren't unique for Bob, but this is his first in the World Series. That brings Ken Harrelson to the plate. Gibson delivers, and Harrelson hits a grounder to short. It's Maxfield to Javier to Cepeda, a double play. Now one out for victory, Gibson makes a supreme effort, and Scott strikes out. The Cardinals win. They're the new world champion. And Bob Gibson, with his third victory, has brought them through in the decisive seventh game, even as he did in 1964 against the New York Yankees. Bob Gibson. A 22-game winner who established a new record for the lowest earned run average in National League history. He strikes out two in the first and three in the second. Norm Cash, Willie Horton, and Jim Northrup all go down. The St. Louis crowd loves every minute. Norm Cash is up, but the incomparable Bob Gibson stops the Tigers with another strikeout to retire the side. Bob is now threatening the all-time World Series strikeout record of 15. Gibson is in complete control. Opening the ninth, Gibson faces Stanley, and Mickey loops a single to center. But it's the last hit of the game for the Tigers. By now, Gibson has struck out 14 batters to bring him just one shy of the World Series record. The batter is Al Kaline. is up next and the count goes to three and two and this pitch makes history a standing ovation for Bob Gibson Bob's not quite finished one more out to go and the batter is Detroit's leading home run hitter Willie Horton Record 17 strikeout. Gibson also ties Lefty Gomez's record of six straight victories at World Series competition. First man to face Farmer in the fourth inning is Bob Gibson. And there it goes. In 1967, Gibson hit a series homer against the Red Sox. Now he has two for a pitcher's record. Born and lives in Omaha, Nebraska. Gave him a day there last year after the 67 World Series. 
Former basketball player with the Harlem Globetrotters. A tremendous all-around athlete. The Jusu Pitts McCollum. Struck him out. Gibson gets his first man. You can throw on the sidelines, and uh, it'll help. Of course, in a ball game, is really when you learn control. Of course, fielding remains just a thought when the batter strikes out. And during the 1974 season, Bob Gibson became the second pitcher in history to reach the magic 3,000 strikeout level.